You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 72. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. What is massive action and why is it magic? I learned about Massive Action from my teacher and mentor, Brooke Castillo, who I recorded a whole episode about last year. When I went back to double check how she described Massive Action and the examples that she used for it, I realized it is possible for the past few years I have been misremembering what Massive Action actually refers to. I was thinking that Massive Action is like a certain number of of repetitive things, and it certainly can include that, but really, Brooke's main definition is that you take action until you get the result that you want. And even though I must have heard and believed that and somehow incorporated it into my own internal definition, I don't think I've repeated it or referred to it or explained it that way to a friend or to myself or a client or you on this podcast. So that's why today's episode is actually called The Magic of Massive Action. Referring to it as magic is more of a play on the unknown or inexplicable quality, even though I am trying to make it a known quality and explain it to you now, but it is like a spark. How do you get something, create something, have something when it wasn't there before? That's magic, right? But it's actually not magic at all. You get what you want through taking massive action. So I want to tell you why I think massive action works so well and why I really do think it is magical. Brooke talks about massive action as taking action until you get the result that you want. That is another way of saying just keep going and don't quit. My explanation of the magic of massive action has evolved from when I first heard Brooke talking about it, so much so that I didn't even really remember her definition. I really think the magic of massive action includes having a specific plan of action. And usually for me, it includes a number of repetitions or a set amount of time. And I've got a few examples of when massive action has worked really well for me and what was so magical about it. And maybe one of these examples will apply to you or be close enough that you can use it as a metaphor for something in your life. The first example is when I had what I would consider a huge amount of debt. And this debt was purposeful and intentional. And so it was good debt, but still debt. I didn't want to be in debt, so I decided, even though I didn't know this at the time, I didn't know the name of it, I decided to take massive action to fully pay off the debt, and I did it. This massive action meant that I made a plan on a spreadsheet where I figured out the most amount of money I could possibly pay towards that debt each month, and then I went ahead and sent in that high amount every month. And for me, the fun part was seeing the balance drop each month and seeing the number of months remaining drop every time that I checked my spreadsheet. And suddenly, well, really, it took a few years, but suddenly, magically, the balance was zero and there were zero months remaining to pay it off. Amazing. I also had a second debt, not quite as big, but still a pretty big amount that I owed, and I just decided to continue rolling over that massive action and those huge payments from my first success, now that it was paid off, into the second one. And again, magically, I did it again. The second debt was completely wiped out. So some people might hear this story and think, okay, Bex, that's not a big deal. You just paid off your debt. 
But it was massive action for me because I did not stop paying. I made what some people would consider a massive plan to pay off those two huge debts. I structured my budget and my spending and my lifestyle so I could throw thousands of dollars at that debt for many months in a row. And I did it. And I loved it. And now I'm enjoying the benefit of financial independence because of the magic of that massive action that I took all those years ago. The second example is basically the complete opposite on the complete other end of the scale from paying off debt with thousands of dollars. This one is much more woo and maybe not as well respected in some circles, but I think I might be equally as proud of this one. And now I'm realizing I also did this one twice. Who knew? This example happened when I was learning a new skill tarot reading. I was learning to read tarot cards and I wanted to improve my skill and have a diversity of experience and get a lot of practice so that I could deliver tarot readings with confidence and with flow and familiarity. So I decided one way to get that experience and familiarity and confidence was to do 100 tarot readings. It was like a self-created practicum. I think I gave myself about two months, maybe a little longer. The self-created practicum had the goal, which I stated publicly, and a deadline, and it really got me out of my comfort zone. It got me excited. It got me motivated. It gave me something to talk about because it felt like a huge goal, and it gave me a reason to get creative and talk to people who I would have never talked to. It gave me a reason to ask people to refer their friends and family to me. And it just really encouraged me to push myself a little bit further because I was so intent on doing those hundred readings. And it was so magical because I got what I wanted. I felt confident. I had experience. I got that diversity of giving readings to all kinds of people in all kinds of environments. And I had so much fun and met so many people. So the next year, around the same time, I decided to do it again. And since I did the first practicum in the months of October and November, the second year, I called it my 10-11 project, 10 for October, 11 for November. And I made it even more challenging for myself because it was the second year and I did have more experience. So while during the first practicum, I included recordings in my count towards 100 readings, in the second year, I only included face-to-face reading so that I could get real-time reactions and feedback. And to continue in our full circle mode and going again in the complete opposite direction, since we went from talking about paying down thousands of dollars in debt over years to 100 tarot readings in a span of a few months, now we are going much, much smaller. This massive action took place over just five days. I told this story before in the lessons learned from Zumba, but the short version is that a few years ago, I noticed when I was looking at my gym's calendar that based on my schedule and the gym's schedule, I would be able to, if I wanted to, go to a Zumba class every day over a five-day period. And so I decided to do that, and I didn't miss a day. I made sure that my schedule was able to accommodate all five of those classes, and I went to Zumba every day for five days. And that reignited my workout habit. It gave me a sense of accomplishment. It made me feel so good. And then eventually, I started going to Zumba every day, nonstop, seven days a week. I coordinated my gyms and my workout schedule and everything in my life, and I became a member of three different gyms because I had a preference for going to Zumba at the same time each morning. And even though some gyms do have classes every day, they're at different times, day and evening, and I didn't want that. I wanted the same time every day. So that's why I ended up joining three gyms. And the point is, I was able to set that original intention for myself and tell myself that I wanted to do the action of going to a class every day. And I did it for five days and I did not stop until I had gotten that result of those five days. And in the meantime, I got so many other really great results that I didn't even know about and that I wasn't even planning on. And all of those benefits came 
because I was taking that massive action of going to those classes those five days in a row. In 2019, I decided that I would post a podcast episode every Friday for the entire year of 2020, starting with the first Friday in January. And then I did launch this podcast on January 3rd, 2020, and every single Friday thereafter, and I posted an episode no matter what. Even if we had a global pandemic, even if I was moving and renovating a house, even if I had some difficulties in life, even if I was having so much fun and things were going great, no matter what, every Friday of 2020, I posted a podcast episode, and I am so glad that I did. I learned so much, and I got so much confidence. I made connections with so many people during a year that many people were feeling isolated and alone. I grew my business. I improved my own writing and thinking skills. So that's another example, the fourth example of how massive action has really been magical for me in my life. And the fifth example that I want to share with you is my current massive action that I am currently in the messy middle of. It's the most recent thing that I've gotten super excited about and super vocal about. You've probably heard me talking about it, or maybe you've seen pictures, or if you've listened to any of my recent episodes or follow me on social media, or if you know me in person, I've probably given you one of these or talked about my journals and notebooks. The massive action that I am currently taking is to create 200 journals and notebooks. That's 200 diverse, various, different topics, different covers, different purposes, 200 total journals and notebooks. And it does feel a little overwhelming, especially when I tell people, when they ask me what I'm up to and what I'm working on, and I talk about how I'm researching and coming up with ideas and designs and color schemes and thinking of who I could create these journals for and what they might want in their journals and notebooks. And I am in the middle of working on this massive action and I am not going to quit until I have 200. It is challenging, but it's also fun and creative. And the result I'm getting is an expanded imagination. I'm improving my design skills. I'm getting curious about other people and their preferences and their habits and their tastes. And at the end, I'll have an inventory of 200 new things that did not exist before. So those were some of the examples of massive action that has worked for me and has given me so many benefits to help me create so many amazing results in my life. If you want to create some of these magic results for yourself by taking massive action, you might be wondering How? You might be thinking, this sounds good, but what am I supposed to do now? As I was making a list of my examples and thinking about them, I realized that there were some common themes and reasons why those examples of massive action were so magical for me in my life. And I'll tell you these common themes so you can think about how you might apply them in your own examples if you want to. The first common theme among all those examples that I just listed is that I was 100% invested in the completion of the action. My definition of massive action is a little different from the definition that I originally learned and started following, but I really like to think of my massive action in terms of iterations or repetitions or doing something over and over again. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same thing over and over again, but a specific number of things that I'll do or a specific amount of times that I'll do something or for a specific length of time. And in all of those examples that I just gave, I was 100% invested in taking that number of actions or taking those actions for that length of time. And I wasn't really highly invested or concerned with the results 100% of the time. I was invested in the actions. Maybe what we would more traditionally think of as the purpose or the reason why or the outcome at the end, that wasn't as big of a factor. Or in some cases, it wasn't even a factor at all. So the short form of what I just said 
is that I had 100% belief that I would do it and I had zero doubt. So that goes along with the second thing in common among all of these examples that I just shared, the decision to do it. My belief about doing it was 100%. I was decided. I was all in. There was zero doubt that I would do it no matter what. To illustrate how this looked for me back in 2019 as I was getting closer to launching this podcast, I recognized that there were some technical aspects that maybe wouldn't be completed in time. For example, I was going to launch my podcast, among other places, on Apple Podcasts. And you have to submit and then wait for them to approve your new podcast before you can start uploading your episodes. And I wasn't in charge of their timeline, so it was potentially possible that even though I submitted in plenty of time, there was a possibility that I wouldn't get to launch on Apple Podcasts on the date that I intended to in order to meet my massive action decision of posting an episode every single Friday of 2020. But because I had 100% decided to do it, I knew that I didn't care if Apple approved me or not. I was pretty sure they were going to, but even if they didn't, I knew I could still just post, for example, in a Google Drive and email that audio link to everyone so they could hear the recording and that would count as a podcast posted. That is why I am saying there was zero doubt. I was prepared to overcome any obstacle. I knew I was taking that action no matter if technology did not agree with me, no matter if something went wrong or unexpected, I knew I was doing it no matter what. The third thing that all my examples of massive action seem to have in common when I was thinking back over them as a collective group is that I made the number of iterations or the number of actions big enough so that no single event really mattered on its own. When you think about doing 100 tarot readings or when you think about paying down thousands of dollars in debt or creating 200 journals... That number is big enough that the individual pieces of the action don't really stand out on their own. So none of the individual actions are make or break. And this happened multiple times over the years that I was paying off that debt. Sometimes unexpected things would happen. Sometimes unexpected expenses would come up. That happens in life. So some months I was not able to pay the full amount that I had budgeted for in my spreadsheet. And that's totally fine. It wasn't a problem. I paid what I could and I kept on going. I didn't make the paying the lower amount mean that I needed to stop or quit or that I was failing. And in the whole scheme of things, I still paid consistently every single month until the debt was paid off. And those months that I wasn't able to pay the full amount that I wanted to or that I had budgeted for, they didn't take away from the overall action that I was taking. And now I'm making notebooks and journals. I can tell that some are better than others. I see that my eyes are drawn to some designs more than others. And because I know that I am going to end up with 200, no one specific design is going to ever disappoint me or hold me back or cause me to question what I'm doing. I've got 199 other notebooks to look at. Another thing that I found in common for the magic of massive action is being able to see progress. I like to see progress. I like to track things. I like to mark things on a calendar and I love checking boxes. So for the tarot reading example, I made myself a list with 100 blank spaces. Every time I did a tarot reading, I would write down the person's name in the space and eventually I could see that list growing from the first person all the way up to 100 people. And in fact, sometimes I might not have even known their names because in the interest of giving 100 tarot readings, I didn't turn anyone down. I, for example, I had gone to dinner with some friends and one of uh, the friend's sons met us at the restaurant with his girlfriend. So I thought, oh, great. People who haven't had a reading from me yet. So the son and the girlfriend both let me do a reading for them there at the table. And while we were sitting there, 
the waitress came by and she saw the tarot cards and she said, oh, what's this? Do you think I could get a reading too? And I was like, of course. (laughs) So she came back to the table when things had slowed down a little bit and she just got a quick little three card spread. And I told her, hey, I'm trying to, you know, do 100 readings by this date. So if you or any of your coworkers want a reading and if you have time, then come to our table, send them over to our table. So another waitress came over and got a reading too. So at that dinner, unexpectedly, I gave four readings. And I probably didn't know the waitress's name. So maybe I just wrote down, you know, waitress one and waitress two on my list of 100 people. But I loved seeing that progress of the names or their job titles filling up the list. Another thing that all of these examples of massive action had in common for me was that they were all goal oriented. I had a specific number of things to do by a specific time, but these goals were all completely arbitrarily made up by me. There was no external authority telling me I needed to exercise for a certain number of days in a week, or there was no business coach telling me that I needed to have a certain consistency with my podcast episodes. There was no financial authority telling me that I needed my debt paid off by a certain time. This was all just me deciding I wanted to do it and then just doing it. So if you're considering massive action for yourself, can you find a way to be 100% invested in the completion of the actions? To believe that you will do the actions no matter what and to choose an arbitrary goal for yourself, not because anyone's making you, that's massive enough that no one individual part matters on its own, but that you can still track and see your progress. If you can see yourself doing this, you can enjoy the benefits of massive action. So let's talk about those benefits. I've gotten so many benefits from taking massive action, and I'm going to just present this as if you are about to get these same benefits too, because I'm sure you will get these benefits or something like them. And I'm pretty sure because I've seen it happen for myself so frequently. The first benefit of taking massive action is that you either win or you learn. And maybe most likely you do both. So you win or you learn. You will win, definitely, meaning you will get the result that you want, whatever that result is, because massive action means you're not stopping until you get it. So of course, you're going to get it. And if you don't get that result, well, first of all, you haven't finished your massive action yet because you're not quitting. So that's why I am so confident in saying you're definitely going to win by getting your result. But also, you will learn. You'll learn so much. You'll learn why you weren't able to do something in some time period, or you'll learn about yourself. You'll learn about your own resistance. You'll learn what are the sentences that you hear yourself saying that might be keeping you from wanting to take that action that you thought you were going to take, but now don't want to. You will learn so much about the process, whatever the action is that you're taking, yourself, and of course, you'll learn about resistance. Another benefit of taking massive action is momentum. Momentum creates habits and maybe also new neural pathways about what you believe is possible. And by promising yourself that you are going to take an action every day or every whatever increment of time, you create momentum and momentum creates habits. And that habit is a new neural pathway in your brain. Before this, your resistance might have promised you that something was impossible or possible for other people, but not for you. The more you take massive action, the more you create that momentum and the more that habit is developed and the more new neural pathways are created in your brain, the more you believe that anything and everything is possible for you. And that's creating more abundance in your life. That's you telling yourself that you have so many options. There's so much available to you. I mean, we could stop the podcast right here 
That benefit is amazing. Developing neural pathways and habits of possibility and options and abundance just pays for itself right there. And the next benefit of massive action is that you are doing something instead of just thinking or talking about it. It seems like there's more integrity in it. This is something that I run into a lot, maybe with myself too, but definitely with people that I talk to. A lot of us like to think about doing things and talk about doing things and plan to do things. There's a lot of thinking and talking and planning happening, and that all feels good, and it is a necessary first step, but it's not the same thing as taking massive action. So as you are thinking about and planning and talking to other people about and researching and deciding all of this, yes, important for steps, but certainly not all of the steps. As soon as you actually start doing something and taking that massive action, that's when you know you are in integrity. Let's face it. Let's be honest. If you talk about something and plan for something and think about something past the point that you need to think about it or plan for it or talk about it, you're not really being in integrity with yourself. You are kind of being disingenuous, maybe even a little dishonest with yourself. And that does not feel great. So by going ahead and taking the action, no more talking, no more thinking, no more planning. Now it's time for doing. You get to claim that integrity, claim it and enjoy it and be in it. And that feels so good. It feels magical and it creates more magic in your life. So now it's your turn. What do you think? Would taking massive action work for you? Can you imagine yourself setting a massive goal for yourself and then focusing on doing the things and not really worrying about the outcome? What do you think might hold you back? What resistance might show up for you? This episode is already pretty long, but as I was thinking about all of this, I did come up with a few examples of when I thought I was taking massive action, but I wasn't really. I wasn't following my own magical formula to get what I wanted for myself. At times, I wasn't 100% invested in taking the actions, or maybe I was too focused on the result and didn't appreciate the incremental progress. And maybe I told myself that progress wasn't happening fast enough. Can you imagine that happening to you? So do you want to hear the examples of when I thought massive action didn't work for me, but I wasn't actually really taking massive action? Or do you have any questions that you want answered in a future episode about massive action? Or do you want to work through any of this in a one-on-one conversation with me? Let me know. What, if any, resistance or questions come up for you, and if you want more about this on the podcast, and reach out to me at hi at bexby.org or leave a message in the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash massive, M-A-S-S-I-V-E. Thank you for listening. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and reactions and hopefully your own examples of massive action. So have a great week and I will talk to you next time. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 